Tropical storm Isaias moving along Florida's coast, bringing wind and rain to parts of the area. The storm largely spared central Florida, but those living along the coast could still feel some of the impacts through the morning. Our team coverage continues now with News 6's Mark Lehman live at Daytona Beach for us this morning. And how are things there, Mark? Well, right now we're getting a little bit of remnants from a rain band that moved through just about 30, 40 minutes ago. So we're getting a little wet out here in Daytona Beach. The main thing right now, though, is the wind and the rough surf here uh, behind me. Uh, the high tide is set for 830 this morning, and a Beach Patrol will be surveying things out here uh, after the sun comes up. Now, these were the conditions we saw along the coast in Brevard County as the storm passed yesterday. Uh, Volusia has been seeing a lot of the same overnight and this morning. For the most part, sustained winds yesterday were around 20 miles per hour. Some areas saw tropical storm force gusts. High tide last night, coupled with storm surge, has raised concerns about beach erosion. And we saw the rough surf eating away at the sand and spots. The good news in all of this is that Florida is being spared the worst of what Isaias has to offer. Volusia County officials gave an update yesterday as the storm approached. Tropical storm Isaias is offshore, and also the stronger winds are to the north and east, which uh, always the right front quadrant of a hurricane is going to be the most significant, which also keeps those stronger winds and, and rain offshore. So that's also good news for us. And with the less severe conditions, there also wasn't much of a need for shelters. One was open in Brevard County, but closed a couple hours later due to a lack in demand. The same happened in Volusia County with its four shelters that were all closed yesterday. And as we come uh, back out here live along the coast, one concern that does remain is sea turtle nests. The beaches here were closed to vehicles ahead of the storm, and that's something that will remain in place until officials say they can have workers out here to survey those sea turtle nests. And there are more than 700 of them here in Volusia County. For now, reporting live in Daytona Beach, Mark Lehman getting results, News 6. All right, Mark, thank you. A little farther to the north, residents in Flagler County are also feeling the effects of Isaias as it slowly makes its way out of the area. We were there yesterday as some people hit the beach, curious to see what the tropical storm would bring to the area. While it wasn't as bad as first thought, residents we spoke to say they'll be ready for whatever comes next. It's a sketchy thing living here 13 years and um, Things could change in a matter of four to five hours. With the warm water, and it's been hot early this year, more than normal, everything's warm out there. It's just, it's waiting for something. It's like, the, I think it's starting to come in early this year. Now with the change in track and intensity, county officials chose to keep the shelters closed and did not issue evacuations. It appears Isaias is setting its sights on the Carolinas now, and when the storm gets there, it could be stronger. This is video out of Cape Fear, North Carolina, where residents are preparing by stocking up on supplies. The governor already declared a state of emergency there and says emergency workers are ready to respond even in the midst of the pandemic. North Carolina emergency managers have been carefully planning for the storm response in a COVID-19 environment. Our state has weathered more than our fair share of storms in recent years. We know how to plan, prepare, and respond when it's over. Nothing about that has changed. But this time, we're going to have to do it with a mask on. A flash flood has been issued for much of North Carolina with forecasters predicting as much as seven inches of rain in some spots.